the porchetta is one of the undisputed pork dishes that we all love so much. Super juicy, fatty pork belly, perfectly cooked and seasoned pork loin, and a glassy, crunchy skin. That's perfect crackling. We're gonna do two versions today. We've got an old school OG, kind of ultimate version that Master Butcher, Kevin Smith's gonna show us how to make. And then our very own Nick Gavin's gonna parallel track a modernized, easy to do, bulletproof kind of version that's like 80% as good with 20% of the amount of work. Let's get to it. Classic porchetta is actually a tricky thing to make. You're trying to get a perfectly cooked loin, which is tender and lean, to cook just right and still juicy while you're wrapping it around a pork belly, basically. That's kind of a tough cut that you need to break down a bunch of connective tissue with. And then around that, you have skin, which doesn't like any of the same type of environment. So it's one of those tricky dishes where all three components need a different thing from the cooking technique. Nick's gonna show us a version though that ticks almost all those boxes that's just way easier to make. It's basically a two-step technique that's bulletproof. And you can pretty much do it with any pork cut of meat you get at the grocery store. It's 125 pounds, so I need a, need a little help. <laughs> You got it, you okay? What are you doing, Cam? <laughs> <laughs> We've got this beautiful um, pig here. This one has been aged for two weeks for us to take a lot of that moisture out of the skin. This is done intentionally to give what I think will give us the best possible porchetta. I'm gonna flip it over in a minute and um, do a little quick breakdown on here. We're gonna go into preparing this section now for tying. And the first thing I wanna do is take out the loin section down here. So I'll start by coming up here and just gently, and I'm not too concerned about cutting into things here because it's all gonna get tied back up. So I'm not trying to get the cleanest butchery in the world here, but I do wanna get the entire loin out. Comes out very easy. It's like a natural seam where it lives. Comes out, and I'm doing this so I can, for a couple of reasons, to A, to butterfly it, so I can get seasoning into the loin. And also there's a really large fat cap, which lives underneath the loin. And as fatty as I like my pork, it's just too much underneath. So this will allow me to uh, trim the fat away from underneath the loin. So this is our loin over here. I'm going to double check to see if there's any little bones up here. Tiny, tiny bit of the chine bone up there so that guy can come off because we are going for completely boneless here. And then a um, slightly unusual way, something I learned um, back in England, is to take the loin and just take a big slice right down the middle of it and just open this guy up right down the middle. And then from here, I like to just get some scores in here, open it up. This is going to allow for flavor to get all the way in. Again, on the other side too, just coming down. This is uh, something that I, I think it looks fantastic in presentation. Also, when it's in sitting in our butcher case and it's tied up, it, it just looks beautiful. You get to see all the herbs running through the middle. So this is our loin section over here, which will get tied up and stuffed in a few moments. This guy's ready. Now looking over here, tiny, tiny bit of shoulder blade left up here. So I'm just gonna scoop this little guy out. It's the end of the shoulder blade between ribs five and six. Just don't wanna be biting into that and chewing it. From here now, I'm going to do the porchetta the way I like to do it. A couple of things I'm looking at is to see if there's any nipples over here. It doesn't really feel great to be biting on a nipple in the porchetta. Just a little incision here. This stuff here, this skin, um, you can just roast this and um, it's amazing for dogs. They love to chew on this. Let's get it super crispy. Wonderful little dog treat there. So now I want to start removing some of this fat. 
A, because how it's going to eat, this is just gonna be too fatty. And also we're not gonna be able to tie it up the way I like to tie it. I'm just gonna start looking where the fat is here. I'm gonna make a cut that comes down like so. And I'm just gonna take my knife over here and start scooping the fat out. I don't wanna lose all the fat, but I do wanna make it um, easy to tie. And I wanna encase the porchetta in skin. I'm trying not to have too much of the um, loin or the belly not encased in skin. Take your time, there's no great speed to be done here. Just take your time, nice and slow. Cutting down to the skin. I'm not trying to be perfect here. I'm not trying to get the skin like shiny and crisp and sh uh, clean on this side. I'm just trying to make it easier for myself when I go to roll it. So kind of getting there now. Also, when you're working with dry aged pork, one of the things to notice is how firm the skin is. And if you don't take some of this stuff out, you are gonna really struggle to tie it up and make it look nice, so. So we can see now, I'm gonna lose just a tiny bit of this lovely belly meat here, not too much. And this is all gonna go to sausage or pate. So same on this side now. We can see getting right in there. I've got this nice piece of skin that's exposing itself. This piece here, this comes off, this goes to sausage. And now I'm gonna make a cut on the other side about here and remove some of this belly. I don't wanna go too deep, about an inch and a half, two inches, something like that. Just down to the skin. And then once I'm done, I'll just peel it off. This is a, a lovely piece of pork belly. You can use this for, um, again, we, we put it in sausage pate, but you can buy strips of uh, pork belly like this and just, you know, roast them, braise them, cure them, whatever you choose. So that will go there. I'll just... Keep looking what I'm doing. So essentially what we're left with here now is a big piece of pork belly with not too much fat on it. The prime part of the pork belly is completely intact and we've removed some of the stuff that's just gonna be a bit too fatty and I'm gonna put the loin back in. So you can see now we've got our pork belly nice strip where our loin is going to go back in and then we've got a strip that will be able to be encased look how firm this is i can't i can't really work it because it's so dry aged which is exactly what's going to give us that great crackling again this is how i like to prepare it if you can't get your hands on an entire section like this it is pretty easy to buy uh, well not pretty easy it's easier to buy a piece of pork belly with skin on um, rather than having the entire loin attached if you want to go and try it the way we do it you can buy a piece of pork belly with skin on take it out of the bag that it comes in and leave it sit on a wire rack in your refrigerator for a few days. It will make your process a lot, lot better than it coming straight out of the cryovac bag. And then you can simply buy a, a boneless loin and you could uh, replicate it. You're not gonna have as much skin, but you'll still get a pretty amazing porchetta. I'm gonna score the skin in a 45 degree angle coming across this way. This, when we tie it up, gives us a lovely spiral effect. I like to hold the knife like this. This is a very sharp knife. You could use a scalpel if you're at home doing it. Um, and just scoring the skin. Doesn't matter to me how deep we get. I don't wanna cut it in half, obviously, but you can see even with a super sharp knife like this, the skin is so good and firm on here. This is gonna help in the cooking process, release some of the fat. It's also gonna make it a little bit easier to carve. I'm actually using quite a lot of force here to get through this skin, which is fantastic. It's gonna make this crackling absolutely amazing here. So one of the reasons I like to score it at this angle is when we go to tie it, if you score it this way, uh, there's a habit of taking your string into where the scores have already been made. 
and you, essentially you're pulling the meat too tight and it makes it really difficult when you go to uh, portion it out at the end because you can't see where the twine is. This way, when it's tied up, I will be able to choose exactly where I want my ties to go and they won't be living in a hole that's already in it. Makes it really challenging to get the, the, the twine out. So, but you can see how deep I'm going here. This is gonna puff up and become really crisp when we cook it. The loin will live back in here and the whole thing is gonna get rolled up. Okay, it's all ready to go. We got all of our little seasonings. I'm just gonna really simply mix all of these together. 1.6% salt to the weight of meat, garlic, black pepper, some whole fennel seed, ground fennel, some chili. I'm just gonna really simply peel these rosemary. I'll just rip these ends off here. I always keep this and throw it into stocks. And then I'm not trying to get anything super fancy here, just a nice rough chop. Same with our basil over here, just put it in. Looks like a lot, but when it gets mixed in with this salt, it's gonna disappear pretty quickly. The more you chop it, the more liquid's gonna come out of it. I'm just gonna take all of this, throw it into my bowl, and then I just wanna get in here, give it a little squish, get that salt in. You'll see it will come into kind of a paste at this stage. We use this seasoning at the shop when we're just like cooking steaks for lunch. We'll just pour this on the top, super good. So this is dry because when it goes into here, the salt is gonna start to break down the the proteins in the meat, the myosin and all that. And um, it's too liquidy, it's just, you're just gonna end up with like a, a wet a wet brine almost going into the meat. So that's my theory on how we don't need to add oil or water to this. Almost done, we got our seasoning, pork loin, pork belly skin on. We're just gonna put this all together now. So generous, really generous seasoning here. Get it into the loin, right into all those little crevices. The whole reason of butterflying this is to make it look nice. Same thing over here. Can't get enough of this stuff in. Just gonna take this guy and just roll it back up, back into its natural shape. And that's that guy there. He's gonna live over here. He's gonna go right back in here where he came from. And we're just gonna take this whole thing now and roll it over, roll it over. So from here, I'm gonna show you how I like to tie this beautiful thing up. I got my twine living in a little hotel pan down here. I like to have it down there because it gives you a lot more um, tension. If it's down here, it's a lot more control on how you can pull it and feel it. If you have it on the table, you just can't get enough tension in the knot. The way I like to show people how to do this is we have one long side and we have a short side. The twine is on the inside of my hand here. I like to take two fingers, take the short side and wrap it around and then slightly open the finger and then do like a loop. So loop it under, grab it, create a knot here and then you can cinch in and get really, really tight. So I'm cinching in here, then I'll take it and I'll tie it off once. And once it's tied in, I can really use my entire body to get right in. You can uh, cut it with a knife. Key little thing here is don't cut it too short. If you cut it too short, um, by the time you tie everything else up, you're gonna have too much tension and the knots are gonna break. So give yourself an inch or two to play with on there. So I like to go about every three quarters of an inch along here. I like to start in the middle. So we're distributing the meat out evenly from uh, the middle to the sort of ends. If you start in one end, you're gonna end up with like a big puffy piece in the middle. This is gonna give me um, like a really cylindrical look. Again, over, coming through, down, under and in. Then we'll take our knife, cut, and we'll go a little bit quicker now. Come over. Then this is where I like to get my attention on this second knot, because I've created the first one which is gonna hold it, and then I can yank it back really good and hard, and I'm feeling, I can't get any tighter is what I'm feeling for there. Do one last little knot in there, and that, that's the securing knot then we don't want to cut it too short. 
Here's our beautiful porchetta, 14, 12 to 14 days dry aged here. Uh, now this guy is on its roasting rack. Definitely suggest putting something underneath like so. Otherwise you're gonna have uh, just loads and loads of fat streaming down into your pan. It's gonna create a load of smoke. This will give you some gap. The fat will drip down. It's not gonna start making the meat, meat taste bitter. You can make this three, four, five days in advance. It doesn't really matter. Just don't season the skin because we, we don't wanna get any moisture up here. We wanna keep this dry. Um, and then we'll, this is it. It's ready to go in the oven, yeah. So skin off pork belly. You can find it pretty much at any store, any butcher shop. But all the bellies are kind of a little bit different depending on how the pig was raised, how it was butchered. So things I look for, on one end, there's the midsection, the chuck end of the belly. This is my favorite. It's a great ratio of meat to fat. On the other end, sirloin end. It has a little bit less meat to it to the ratio of fat. Both were great, but if I had a choice at the butcher shop, I would go with the midsection of the belly. This is three and a half to four pounds. I like to butterfly this out. So I locate the middle between the meat and the fat. This is where I'm gonna be cutting through. I'm gonna point it towards my dominant hand, right-handed. So all we are gonna be doing is cutting parallel to the table all the way to the end. And we're gonna fold it open like a book. Don't cut all the way through it because we're gonna roll it back up. So here we go. Gonna position it right at the end of the cutting board. Okay. Here, hand pressing on the top. We're just gonna do long strokes. Lift it up. It doesn't need to be perfect. Again, this is just to help the seasoning penetrate. Give it a little press. Now that it's fully butterflied open, we can start applying our seasoning. We're gonna stick to the tried and true ingredients. Most important thing, we have percentages in the recipe for all these ingredients, but the salt, we want at one and a quarter percent. We have black pepper, fennel, some dried rosemary and salt. Let's give these a mix. I like to use garlic paste, or you can even just grate up microplane the garlic right onto it. Cool. So I like to apply the garlic first because I feel like it spreads a bit more evenly. If you mix the garlic paste into all your seasoning, it becomes more of a paste and it's a little bit harder to evenly spread it around. And there, we're gonna apply our seasoning mixture evenly across the whole belly. The reason why I landed on using dried herbs was because during earlier trials of using a bunch of parsley, thyme, and rosemary that were fresh, it will actually discolor a lot during the cook. But I still wanted that flavor of the fresh herbs and so during the sous vide cook, I add some sprigs of thyme and rosemary to the bag, that way, those oils are still on the pork as it cooks. So if you notice, I didn't actually apply the seasoning all the way to the edge. There's about like a half inch barrier or so. That's gonna help as I roll it, it just doesn't fall right out. So this end, this is gonna be our presentation side. This is our nice fat cap here. We're gonna leave that there and we're gonna start rolling from the opposite end. All right, cool. Now from here, all we need to do is truss it up to really secure the pork out during the cook so it doesn't unravel. Here we're using butcher's twine. I'm cutting it to about 24 inches long. You're gonna need about five to six strands that length. I like to space out the knots about one inches apart. We're gonna flip it over. Fat's gonna be going down. I like to start with my first strand in the middle. So what I do is you're gonna push it down to the table and you're just gonna Slide it on down. So I like to get all these staged first before I start tying. The reason why we put the fat cap side down is because that's the presentation side um, because we like to have the knots tied where the seam is. Those knots are gonna kind of make an indentation on the pork that we don't necessarily wanna show off. So I like to grip the string with my thumbs, keeping it really taut. 
And that helps me know that there's a straight line between them. If you're just kind of moving the string around like this, it might be curved. And when you go to flip it over, you'll realize your string is all over the place. It's not where you thought it was. So starting in the middle. So what I like to do is loop it around about three to four times. Three is more than sufficient. The reason why I like to do three first is because when you first tie it, it's gonna hold really tight when you go in for the second loop. So check it out. When I let go of it, it stays there. Then we're gonna secure the knot. One more loop. Cool. It's gonna sound a little overkill, but when you're tying it, I think it's important to make sure there isn't anything around your arms right here. Reason being, with how tight this is, when that string breaks, your arms are coming straight out. I've broken so much stuff before. All right, check it out. Tied super tight. This one took six strands, spaced out one inch apart. This guy is not unrolling from here. All we need to do is bag it up with our herbs, oil, cook it sous vide. So you guys have butchered your hunks of meat. You've trussed them. We've got some scoring going on here. No scoring here. And now we're ready to cook. You guys got different cooking strategies. So yeah, this one, um, the skin is still on obviously, dry age for 14 days. Some things that I think are really important here is to notice how the entire porchetta is wrapped in skin. There's no part of it that's not, so it's completely encased. That's gonna create um, an amazing crackling all the way around, apart from the very bottom. Mm. Also, the loin has been butterflied, and you can see just looking in there, that's gonna take away some of the risk of uh, overcooking the loin um, because it's gonna be basically encased in the pork belly itself. Mm. I'm gonna put this in the oven really high, 420-ish, anything from 30 minutes to an hour, depending on how the oven's going. I want the skin to get high, uh, crackling and crisp. Then we'll drop it down 250 to 300. You know, there's no set rules, just work with your oven. And we'll cook it down low and slow. I'm looking for about 170 internal temp. I feel like that's the best uh, temperature that pork belly eats at. And also the, the loin is gonna be a little, you'd think it would be overcooked, but it's gonna be encased with all of that fat and it's gonna start melting into it. So uh, really excited about this one. You got the little baby at home one over here. I, got I know the, it's gonna be good, what are we gonna do? All right, this baby boy, we're gonna do the opposite. We're gonna go low to high temperature. So we're gonna start off sous vide. We're gonna cook it overnight. So it's like a very low temperature controlled braise to lock the texture and doneness we want. And then we're gonna finish it high temperature at about 400 degrees in the oven on air fry to develop a nice golden kind of crust to it. It's not gonna be crispy, not gonna be crackly, but it's gonna have all the flavors that we're wanting in a good porchetta. It's gonna be like crispy golden air fried fat not skin. Mm. Correct. Yeah. I want to see how crispy the skin gets here. This one's probably for 12 or 16 people. Yeah. This one's probably for four to six or something. It's almost starting to make sense now. Coming over, I've got the oven at 425. I've got the skin side facing up. Beautiful rationale, big fancy oven. Going in. And we're just gonna leave that guy. We'll monitor it for the next half an hour or so. Watch the skin start to crisp up and then we'll drop it low and slow and uh, we'll keep our eyes on it. Time to cook. So let's bag up the porchetta. Same side here. I like to have that facing towards the opening of the bag. So we're gonna add a little bit of oil. This is gonna help jumpstart the flavor of the herbs kind of going all around the porchetta. Because these herbs will discolor it, I like to put it on the seam side. Let's drop it into the water bath. Pork belly is loaded with fat. That fat is gonna naturally just wanna float. So when you put it in there, using a wire rack or a pair of tongs, or just a tool you find around your kitchen, even a pot, just gonna weigh it down. It might not float at first, but it will later on during the middle of the night. You don't want to wake up to that thing floating at the surface of your water bath. Also too, for longer cooks, just make sure it's wrapped up tight to avoid any evaporation. But 24 hour cook. All right, so we're going to take the porchetta out now. It's been in for about 45, 50 minutes at 425. Um, so let's see how it's looking. Oh. 
exactly what we're looking for here. This is a stage to turn the temperature down. It's puffed up. This is, for me, as good as I can get crackling. Um, beautiful, beautiful color on here. I'm gonna drop the temperature of the oven to about 280-ish on here now. We'll check it, a couple of hours, 170 internal temp is what we're looking for. And that's it. During the 24 hours, so much fat has been rendered out of this. This is a good thing. You don't want too much fat, even though we are using belly here. You want a nice ratio of the fat to the meat. So it's cooked, still trussed up, still have all six pieces of twine. This is just what we want. Dealing with a lot of bag juice might be the most awkward part of sous vide. To avoid any catastrophes, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pour out the juice first. We're gonna save this. Kevin couldn't do this with his poor cat. <laughs> We're gonna transfer it to a tray with paper towel. We're gonna get it nice and dry. You can discard the herbs that have cooked. All the flavor is gone from this. Point of going in the oven is to develop a lot of flavor in the golden crust on the surface. All that moisture is gonna be in our way. And because all of our seasoning and salt is inside the porchetta, I like to add a little bit of finishing salt. You can use flaked mullein salt, kosher salt to the outside. All right, so we had the long, low temperature cooked sous vide for 24 hours. Um, in that time, we got the perfect doneness and the texture that we want. Now, all we do is need to make this look like a really nice centerpiece. 400 degree oven, high convection. So as the moisture evaporates on the surface, first you'll see color develop on the top and about 10, 15 minutes in, you should start seeing that golden color on both sides. Depending on your oven, you might need to rotate at 180 halfway through the cook. Pull this uh, beautiful thing out of the oven. It's been cooking for about three and a half hours now. It doesn't look too bad at all. Yeah. Ooh. Amazing crackling. Look at the color of it. I'm super happy with this. This, that's perfect crackling. We'll uh, leave it rest. We'll have to use a serrated knife to cut this and uh, we'll, we'll get into it. This is looking great. It's a little guy, but it looks good. So what I'm looking for here on the ends should be really dark brown, almost like a, a dark brick red. There's a lot of texture on there, even though it's not skin or crispy fat, that meat is crisped up nicely. Top, even golden color. Not just on the top, should be on all sides. You're actually able to see the Malden salt, the flake salt that we put on before really well now because all the moisture on the surface is gone. So this is finished sous vide for 24 hours. It's been in the oven at 400 for 30 minutes to develop this nice color and a bit of a crust. All right, so let's let this rest for probably porchetta this size, 15 minutes or so. We'll be ready to cut into it. All right, this is the moment we've all been waiting for. We've got OG porchetta and a new school porchetta. It's time to eat them. They look very different. I'm just gonna start right there. Sure, smell good. So this one, the key, what I was looking for in the beginning uh, was glassy crisp skin, which we clearly have here. I wanted the entire porchetta to be practically encased in its own fat, its skin, uh, you know, creating that lovely vessel where we're keeping everything inside. And then we got Nick's over here. Let's yeah, see where we're at. yeah this I wanted it to look like a porchetta, taste like one, but maybe not sound like it. I can tell that fat's skin on very ground. lacy and delicate and crispy though. Should we dig in? I have a serrated knife here, heavy handled. I don't want to use a uh, high carbon steel knife on something that is as uh, crunchy and crispy as this. It's just not good for the blade. I also got this little setup here where it's on a slight angle. You can see the board coming down. This is how we slice and rest all of the meat at the restaurant and the shop. Um, it just stops the fat building up and having a pool of swimming fat. So uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and cut. I'm just gonna try a little bit of everything. Actually, I'm gonna try the tricky part. The loin. The loin. Oh. The loin's like the trick, I would say probably the hardest part, right? The loin is Oh yeah. Like the belly's gonna be fine no matter what. It's just normal when you make it, you chop it up. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Loin's nice and salty. For being cooked for four hours is the juiciest mm. pork loin I've ever had. Mm -hmm. Okay, the skin. It's a lot more tender than I thought it was gonna be. It's not, you know oh, when yeah. it's like, ugh. 
chewy and get stuck in your teeth. That's the chicharron. That's really nice. Mm -hmm. I like the flavor of everything you put in there. It's like, it's, you can tell it's loaded with herbs, but it's yeah. subtle. It doesn't take over the pork flavor. All, All right. right, let's slice into it. Let's go ahead. I can hear right. the juiciness. Ooh. Mm. Beauty. I want some. All right, I'm trying next. The new school, easy Monday through Friday. I mean, it's delicious pork belly. But this was a texture we like where it wasn't like fall apart brazy, but yeah. it, was, it was very tender, still really juicy. It's not too much fat in there. It's a nice ratio of meat without adding extra cuts like the loin and stuff. Mm -hmm. Delicious, I love the, it's perfect how crispy the fat is, you know? There's no skin on it, but the fat is mm -hmm. really crispy. Don't forget to go to Chef's Steps, get all the tips and tricks you need. And if you're not feeling like you want to invest a mountain in pork and go through all that chasing mm -hmm. down, use the new school one that Nick's got for you. Monday to Friday, super easy, keep you near fried done. Go work, guys. All right, let's all eat now. <laughs> Subscribe to our channel and visit ChefSteps.com for more tips, recipes, guides, and tools to help you level up in the kitchen.